In the previous episode, we looked at the Marcus movements of East Asia. Well, in this video, we're going to go a little southwards to look at the Marcus movements of Southeast Asia. And we're going to start with America's good old friend, Vietnam. The last monarchs of Vietnam were from the Nguyen Dynasty, which was established by Nguyen An in 1802. He reigned until his death in 1820 and was succeeded by several more conservative Confucian emperors. This matters because Nguyen An was tolerant of Catholicism and even employed European advisors in his court. But his successors ardently resisted Western influence and persecuted both foreign-born Catholics as well as native converts. The French government under Napoleon III used these persecutions as an excuse to invade Vietnam in 1858, and by the end of the 1880s, all of Vietnam was under French control under the designation of French Indochina, containing parts of modern-day Cambodia, Laos, and China. Like most European powers, the French used local elites in order to govern their colonial possessions. This resulted in the Nguyen dynasty becoming a puppet dynasty of the French. The last reigning emperor, Bao Dai, along with his family, were ousted from Vietnam after World War II due to their collaboration with the Japanese occupation. After the communists took control of China in 1949, the French invited Bao Dai to return to Vietnam as head of state rather than as emperor until 1955 when he was ousted again after the split up of Vietnam into North and South. Some of the royal family would remain in South Vietnam until the communists take over in 1975, but Bao Dai would live in exile in France until his death in 1997. He was succeeded by his son, Bao Long, who ruled as the head of the royal family until 2007, at which point then he was succeeded by his younger brother, Bao Tong, who would reign as the head of the royal family until 2017, at which point he was succeeded by his youngest brother and the youngest son of former Emperor Bao Dai, Bao An. Before Bao Dai's death, a US-based organization called the Vietnamese Constitutional Monarchist League was founded in 1993 by a man named Nguyen Phuc Bu Chan, who claimed to be a member of the Vietnamese royal family. Bu Chan claimed that he had been appointed as Prince Regent of the royal family at some point, but no one in the legitimist line had ever heard of this guy before 1993. The organization consists of some former officials from the government of South Vietnam as well as some Vietnamese exile communities. They claim to be in contact with remnants of the royal family still living in Vietnam. The goal of this organization is to pressure the communist regime in Vietnam into holding a referendum where the people of Vietnam could vote to restore the monarchy, but chances of this are slim. The descendants of Bao Dai don't support this organization or its goals. And in fact, they have their own organization called the Imperial Order of the Dragon of Annam, which primary purpose is, is to raise money for humanitarian aid and Vietnamese charity for exile communities. Bu Chan has a second organization he runs called the International Imperial Council of Vietnam. On this website, he goes a long way to portray himself as the proper heir to the throne of Vietnam, and compared to the more widely recognized claimants website, he is doing more for his web presence. However, both are comically outdated. There also doesn't seem to be any official web presence for the Vietnamese Constitutional Monarchist League. All I could find was an archived page, but if you check his Imperial Vietnam website, you'll see a link on the side that says Vietnamese Constitutional Monarchist League. But when you click it, you are taken to some kind of web hosting service that I've never heard of before. So I did my due diligence and checked to see if Vietnamese Constitutional Monarchist League.com was available. And it was. So... From Vietnam, we move inland to Laos, whose story is similar to that of Vietnam. In the late 18th century, most of what is now Laos fell under the control of Thailand, who would control it until 1893, when it came under French control after the Franco-Siamese War. Like with Vietnam, the French would rule Laos indirectly, ruling through a local dynasty as a protectorate of France. Laos was granted independence by France in 1953, under the rule of Sisyphong Vong. He would be succeeded by his son, Sisyphon Vatana, in 1959. And it was in the 1950s that three political factions organized around three princes would begin to emerge. Leading a royalist faction was Prince Bao Um, who was the son of the last king of Champasak, a smaller kingdom that was absorbed into Laos when it was granted independence. Leading a neutral faction was Prince Susavong Fuma, who was the son of the last vice king of Luang Prabang, another smaller kingdom absorbed into Laos at the time of independence. Leading a communist faction was the half-brother of Suvana Fuma, Sufanuvong, who was backed by the Vietnamese communists. 
Sisavong Vatana would reign until 1975, when Lao communists supported by Vietnam and the Soviet Union would overthrow the royal government and force the king to abdicate, after which Prince Susanuvong was made president of the Laos People's Democratic Republic. Somewhere between 30 and 40,000 members of the former royal government, as well as members of the royal family, were taken to re-education camps in remote places in Laos. Vatana was given the meaningless title of Supreme Advisor to the President because he refused to leave the country. He and his son, Crown Prince Vong Savong, would eventually die in captivity sometime between 1978 and 1984. Those who were able to escape the re-education camps after the communist takeover went to France. Vatana's youngest son, Sarya Vong Savong, would serve as head of the Lao royal family and as regent for his nephew, the Crown Prince Sula Vong Savong, until his death in early 2018. In 2003, a non-profit corporation called the Royal Lao Government in Exile was established in Oregon, leading the group since its creation is Kumpani Sisavati, who is referred to as the Prime Minister. The organization operates around the world communicating with Lao exile communities and lobbying governments to recognize them as the legitimate government of Laos or to gain material support in their goal to re-establish the monarchy and abolish the communist regime. At this time, there is no known cooperation between the royal family and this organization. Organization. If you visit their website, laogov.org, you'll find that it's pretty sparse. They have a P.O. box that you can send stuff to, but almost nothing else on the website is actually functioning. From there we move east, where we'll end our exploration of Southeast Asia and Burma, where the monarchist movement is weakest. The last royals to rule Burma were the Kanbaung dynasty, who ruled from 1725 to 1885, when the British consolidated their holdings in the country after the Third Anglo-Burmese War. This was done in response to the French taking control of Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. The last king of Burma, Thiba, was exiled with his family to the port city of Ratnagiri in British-controlled India. During his time in exile, he and his family lived off of a pension from the British government until he died in 1916. He was survived by three daughters. The eldest daughter, Mayat Fayalat, married a cousin who served as his father's private secretary in 1917, but never had any children of her own. The third daughter of Thiba, Takehisu Mayat Faya, was born during the exile and would marry the grandson of a former king of Burma in 1922 and divorced him in 1929. While married, she would give birth to their only daughter, Faya Rita. The fourth daughter, Mayat Faya Gale, returned to Burma before her father's death. She married an ex-monk named Koko Nang and had six children with him, but the only one we're interested in is her son, Ta Faya. Ta Faya, born in 1924, was married to his cousin, Faya Rita, and became head of the royal family upon his mother's death in 1956. He is the current pretender to the throne of Burma, but the Myanmar government restricts his movements because they're afraid that he might spark a kind of grassroots uprising against the Myanmar military government. However, there's very little chance and very little support for the restoration of the monarchy in Burma, considering the fact that it's only a few intellectuals in the country who actually support any kind of idea like that. In the next episode, we're going to move eastward into the Indian subcontinent. So to make sure you don't miss that episode when it comes out, make sure you click the subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified whenever new videos are uploaded. If you're interested in digging more into the subjects of this video, I have my sources listed in the description below. I would like to thank my patrons for helping me make this video possible. Thanks to your support, I can continue to make these videos for people to enjoy and learn from. If you're interested in becoming a patron, or you can get perks such as getting to see videos early, or getting your name in the end credits of videos, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below, or on the end screen of this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.